Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stevie B, hope you're doing well. Uh, so before we get into it today, let me just clear up any confusion surrounding the terms sync and stock for those of you who might be new to the licensing lingo. Essentially, what we're taking a closer look at here is two fundamentally different approaches when it comes to working with music libraries. We're gonna take a look at the core differences between music libraries that serve the TV and film market, sometimes referred to as uh, production music libraries or sync libraries, and music libraries that serve the content creator market, often referred to as royalty-free or stock music libraries. Quick disclaimer, there is occasionally some overlap. So sometimes music from royalty-free libraries gets sourced for TV shows. Uh, it's happened to me. Uh, sometimes production libraries have uh, royalty-free catalogs. Uh, but for the most part, I think that you'll find that music libraries fall into one of these two categories. Now, music producers who are actively writing music for licensing often have different approaches when it comes to the types of music libraries that they're aiming to work with. There's always been a lot of discussion uh, back and forth about what makes more sense, working with royalty-free libraries or sync libraries. So let's start by taking a look at sync libraries. So if your aim is to get placements on TV shows or in films or in trailers, this strategy is it's a bit more of a long game. Production music or sync libraries serve a more specialized clientele. They often have close relationships with TV and film production companies and can potentially land more lucrative placements for your music. And these exclusive placements can lead to upfront sync fees and considerable back-end royalties over time. There is, of course, a lot of competition for these placements and royalties can take years to accumulate to a substantial amount. That being said, for those who are willing to be patient and persistent and invest in developing great relationships with the right libraries and publishers uh, who are able to consistently place their music, uh, the payoff can be enormous in the long run. Another thing to consider is that these types of libraries are almost always exclusive. So once you hand over your music and you sign a contract, you basically cross your fingers and hope that the library can land a placement for you because that's the only place that those tracks are gonna live once you've signed an exclusive contract with that library. Some of these contracts will allow you to remove uh, your tracks after a certain amount of time if you want to. Uh, other contracts keep your music in perpetuity meaning forever. So every library is a bit different. Every contract is a bit different. So the other strategy is the non-exclusive royalty-free library approach, uh, which has its pros and cons as well. So we're talking about libraries such as Pond5, Motion Array, Storyblocks, Artlist, to name a few. Music libraries such as these serve the needs of independent content creators for the most part. So YouTubers, indie filmmakers, podcasters, for example. The truth is, is that you're not likely to make much or any back-end performance royalties on music that you sell on these types of libraries. And to better understand why, I might suggest checking out the video that I'm gonna link up above, uh, which goes into much more detail about performance royalties and how they work. But that being said, there are several advantages to working with royalty-free libraries. One of them being that many of them pay out their authors monthly. Uh, so rather than potentially waiting for many months or even years to collect payments, it's possible to start making money almost immediately. Uh, but that being said, in most cases, sales on royalty-free music libraries are slow at first, uh, especially for authors who are new and are just trying to build their portfolio. Many of these libraries are also hyper-saturated. There's a lot of competition. It can be difficult to stand out in a crowd and it can take some time before you start to see some momentum. But it is entirely possible for a single track to be licensed or downloaded from the same library hundreds, even thousands of times, which can generate significant passive income. Most of you here on YouTube know me as someone who's had some success with uh, Artlist and Motion Array, and I can attest firsthand that there is uh, certainly an opportunity to make quite a bit of money if your tracks do well. Uh, but again, it's a matter of persistence and it can take some time before you start to see some momentum. One big upside to working with royalty-free libraries is that many of them offer non-exclusive contracts. So the same music that you're uploading to Motion Array, for example, can be uploaded to your Spotify account or your SongTrader account, or you can pitch the music to other non-exclusive libraries. So there's a lot more flexibility. 
So clearly there's pros and cons for each strategy, but I think it's wise to be open to working with both types of libraries if you're at a point where you can consistently produce great material. I think everyone's situation is a little bit different, uh, but in general, I usually recommend starting with non-exclusive royalty-free libraries if you're new to the licensing game and especially if you're relatively new to music production. Libraries like Pond5 are very approachable, uh, they're easy to work with, and they accept most submissions. But I also speak with producers who are quite advanced with their production skills. Uh, they've got no interest in the royalty-free game, they just want to get their music on TV shows and start stacking up those placements, building their back-end royalties, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Ultimately, in order to succeed in music licensing, regardless of the type of library that you're choosing to work with, it requires regular quality output and a bit of research into which libraries you're best suited to working with. If you're producing enough high quality material at a regular pace, I personally think it makes sense to develop working relationships with a select group of exclusive and non-exclusive libraries so that you're able to generate stable monthly income while also putting yourself in a position to earn back-end royalties from TV placements in the long run. This is a strategy that's worked well for me, but it's really a matter of how much music you're writing and, of course, the quality of the music that you're writing. My own output varies depending on how many projects that I've got on my plate at any given time, but I'm usually able to wrap up anywhere between four to six tracks per month and sometimes more. I work with two exclusive publishers and two royalty-free libraries at the moment, and that's about as much as I can handle. Now, speaking of quality, this is primarily why I started the Production Music Academy. The Academy courses focus mainly on composition in a wide range of styles that have done really well for me over the years, everything from hip hop to folk music to dramedy. And the more that I've studied writing music in different genres, the more versatile I've become as a music producer. And that in turn has made me a valuable contributor to the various libraries and clients that I work with. Not only do I host all of my course content on the Academy, but it's also an online community of music producers from all over the world that you can network with and ask for feedback on your work. I'd love to have you in there, so I'll leave the link to the Academy in the description below. Go check it out and let me know if you have any questions. So let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Uh, what are your thoughts about working with either Sync or Stock Libraries? Uh, what's your strategy right now and moving into 2024? What are your goals? And by the way, my good friend Eric Copeland from Make Music Income just recently put out a, a podcast episode that explores this very subject as well. He's making money from both Stock and Sync um, now and he's been working hard at it for a long time. I'll link that up above, go check it out. I'd love to hear from you. Hit me up in the comments if you wanna share your thoughts or ask any questions. And in the meantime, wishing you all well. I will see you soon, bye bye.